Do what, fuck it. I might have a bottle of champagne. Packing pillows. <laughs> what do you think of that then, Hobbit? People are get the wrong idea if you keep filming me eating. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fish and chips. Oh, Fish and chips. Yeah. It's Friday. Welcome back to Rudgy AK and the Doctor. If you just joined us, hit like, share and subscribe. I'm trying to hit the thousand and that will be a big help. Those of you who joined the Coffee and PayPal page this week, thank you ever so much for doing that. If you haven't had a look, pop on there. Some of it's free. You can have a look around and uh, see what I'm about by my photographs and stuff. Right, what have we got this week? Well, this week I take the bucket uh, on a bit of a jolly around... Um, Kingswear and uh, and then we go on through a few areas. I'm not going to go too much into that You'll have to watch the video <laughs> But I thought while well, we got the high car bucket don't get out that much these days I'd take her for a jolly uh, and then we move my stuff to Nomad International so that it can be then transported overland to Kefalonia uh, That was a bit of a trauma as you'll see in the video and then we've got the winter warmer so plenty to watch if you hang on the winter warm will be on the end you can guess where i am for those of you who visited the coffee and paypal page this week thank you ever so much for doing that. that's a massive help at the moment uh, and for those of you who haven't had a look on there you don't have to uh, chuck any money at me on there you can have a look at the photographs and stuff uh, there is some interesting things um, but i do put up a, a bit more of a personal post on there for the people who subscribe to that channel right well we'd best get on with it then haven't we Actually, before we start the video, Mark Spooner 118, congratulations. Yes, it was Trapazaki, and there's quite a few of you said that, so you're on the ball, aren't you? What are you doing, Bucket? It's like she's doing the recycling. <laughs> well, it looks like the digging tour key up. There used to be uh, a centre reservation there with plants and stuff in, and a coffee, coffee uh, supplier there for your beverages. Uh, wouldn't mind if they made the place better, but they never do. So I'm now getting a right load of stick. What did you just say? Can I stop for a photo? Yeah, taking the mickey out of me because I've pulled up to show you this. Um, We're actually in, I thought I'd take the bucket out for a bit of a ride round because we don't do that very often. No, we haven't done that for a long, long time. And we've both been quite busy and uh, it's all been a bit hectic. So now we've sorted the merchandise out. I brought the bucket, the Sunny Kingswear, but we're not stopping here. We're going to go across on the ferry. But look at that. Look at that. Now, <clears throat> you all know I've sold my boat, Sovereign Bay. This is where the journey started with Sovereign Bay, in that car park down there. and uh, it was transported down from that road there all the way round here on a low loader into the yard and we caused absolute chaos out of shut roads off the police were escorting it all sorts of things anyway it was launched just over there about four years ago now and then i went up river for your bearings right up there and round the corner is gampton where i was uh, quite happy on that that vessel for uh, four or five years or so so yeah that's uh, that's dartmouth over there we're going to go over there and get an ice cream or a cream tea whatever the whatever the uh, hobbit <laughs> she's not with us is she oh. <laughs> Whatever the whatever the bucket wants. Anyway, the Hobbit wouldn't have a cream tea. Oh no, he's got trans fats in it. So yeah, that's the uh, the famous railway that you can uh, you can do a round robin on that. You get the bus and then it brings you down there. They put you on the train, take you to Totnes or somewhere. I think I don't know. And then you get the river ride back from Totnes. So bucket, what are we doing? <laughs> we are mucking about. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's where the train comes in I was talking about earlier, into there. 
and that's where we're going now to get the lower ferry as they call it which will take us across there if it's running today i think it is there it is over there look right let's get on in the higher car the mighty bilingo right so here we are on the uh kingswear ferry <coughs> It's quite interesting how they do this. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll film it as we go, but we're actually um, going to be heading <clears throat> in that direction there. So uh, he'll unrope this boat here, this tug, and then the tug swings out and comes back and faces the right way, and he re ropes it, and we go straight the way across, while that one's doing the same in the other direction. So I'll film that in a minute. There's the uh, foot passenger ferry, which will go out and around and over to the uh, quayside over there, where I used to moor up in the summer occasionally. And now we're just leaving the Kingswear slip. Now, this is where it gets interesting. There you go. Watch this look. <coughs> You've got to have some skills to be able to do this. I can tell you. roped us up um, so we're traveling in the right direction and he'll swing around that way because we've got another one coming in there which will do the same thing so I'll try and film that for you here we go look see if I can zoom in sorry about the camera shake but we're Fighting against all sorts of things here. There you go, you see how they've unroped the stern of that tug now? And you'll do exactly the same as this guy's just done with this one, swing it round. And then re it to push the car transporter in the right direction. Bearing in mind there's wind and tide to uh, work against here, and we're on springs at the minute, or just coming off springs, I think. We have the lowest and highest tides for a good while, I think. I'll find out a bit of information about that in a minute for you. There you go. There we go, we're just coming in now. So I better get back in the car. Right, so here we are in Dartmouth Bucket. Green tea time. Green tea time. <laughs> right, now as you can see the tide's out. Interesting fact, I was talking to the ferryman because uh, as those of you who follow me a lot know, I gave up my boat uh, just recently um, so I'm a bit out of touch with the tides because I haven't been on it for about a year now uh, we were, we've had some extreme tides we're just coming off springs the highest one was apparently 5.5 for those of you who know a bit about that now the significance of that is the tides running now so that shows you how difficult I mean it runs at about between five and seven knots through here I think from memory um, so uh, at its height that uh, ferry will be running against a five to seven knot tide with uh, I don't know 20 tons on board <laughs> so uh, it goes to show you how skillful those guys are right we're gonna head over there to the embankment see what that's like now it used to be really good you want book it? I might have a bottle of champagne. You did say you were paying for the day. Oh. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Magnum. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, Magnum of champagne. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I'll tell you the price later. No. I was just going to have a coffee. <laughs> Make that a coke. <laughs> right, so we've just been in uh, what's called the embankment now. It's changed the uh, name several times in the years I've been coming. They don't do cream teas anymore, but they have got some extremely nice olives in there. Really nice. Anyway, uh, just up in that direction is where I used to be berthed. That's Kingswear, where we just come from. And in the summer, 
um, I used to come down here quite a lot on Sovereign Bay and uh, more up where that uh, steel boat is there. Uh, and in fact, there's a story about when I first got Sovereign Bay, I got a big audience, it was in the summertime, and I uh, come stern to all the way down here, astern, to about here, and then drift aside was into that slot where that steel boat is. Managed to do it, <laughs> quite professionally to my surprise. Now, another thing that I can tell you about is, uh, you see the little launch just going out there to the blue boat that little blue boat there used to be a green one the same sort of style and size about 30 years ago now i used to sit in this place here i was married then and uh dream about owning something that size funny how things turn out I ended up with something three times bigger anyway i'm gonna take the bucket to blackpool sands now she's not been for a few years so we thought we'd drive back that way I would do a bit more filming while I'm walking, but one, I'm limping again. <laughs> so it's a bit wobbly. And two, I forgot the selfie stick. But there's the uh, Castle Hotel. I have done a couple of gigs in there. Um, at the height of my career, when they used to have the Dartmouth Music Festival on, there's a big stage just there. And I performed on that four years on the trot, I think. And then Celine Dos Santos took over from me. If you're watching this, Celine, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. And that was where she first got a big gig from and uh, had a helicopter out of here to go to London. I couldn't believe it. I was so chuffed for her. <laughs> One of my friends doing that well. <laughs> anyway, I hope she's still doing well. And uh, you never know. Maybe I'll return one day. Uh, last gig I did was over in one of the pubs over there. A little friendly family thing. Anyway, yeah. That's Dartmouth. Let's get the bucket on the road. Right, well, here we are in sunny Kingsbridge. And the reason for that is that the uh, road is closed between Dartmouth and um, Blackpool Sands. So I think we're going to make it to Blackpool Sands today. So I thought okay, we'll have a little look around Kingsbridge, show you what that's like. And as if by magic, there we are on the quayside at Kingsbridge. Now, where I wanted to go was a few miles in that direction I was going to film Blackpool Sands but unfortunately as I've just said there's some diversions up I don't know what they're doing to the road I don't know what they're thinking because it's a an hour's round trip tourists aren't going to put up with that are they but yeah that's the uh, little town of Kingsbridge for you what are you doing Bucket? Right, well, why are you stood on a busy road shouting at the camera? Well, I'll tell you, you see this pub behind me here? The Freak Brothers uh, have done a, a few gigs in there way, way back. Got to be 26, 27 years ago now. And I thought it would make good footage, good content, I thought to myself. I didn't realise that it's rush hour and it's really busy. But as you can see, quite a picturesque little village. The bucket's enjoying herself. She's photographing for England, look. Yeah, we're just up from Harberton Ford, um, where I also used to do some gigs. For those of you uh, who've never been to Devon, might enjoy this. That's what I thought. Anyway, there's the church tower. And the local Range Rover. <laughs> so, we'll head through Harbourton Ford and out through Totnes. The Americans that watch my site, and I know there's a few of you, that used to be a phone box. As you can see, it's been repurposed as a defibrillator. I don't know whether I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> Sounds like I've had too many beers and I haven't been drinking today. Oh well, let's get in the car. And as if by magic, we're in Harberton Ford. And I see that the pub that we used to play in when I was in the Freak Brothers is closed by the looks of it. Which is a shame. That one there. Now, this little pub here 
when I started out with the Freak Brothers, we started doing small venues, and uh, this was one of them, and they loved us here. And I actually met a guitarist from the ride here, John, who I later worked with into Kipfoss, um twice, two years on the truck. Uh, and I've worked with him in various bands since then. Now, if I remember rightly, because I've not been here for a while, just up here there was a wine bar i don't know whether it's still there that place there i think was a wine bar and we've worked in there as well with the fruit brothers but yeah that's uh the picturesque devon village the barberton ford isn't it? <laughs> the things you see with me i don't know Anyway, yeah, I feel a bit uh, a bit sad about that, if that's shut. It's a nice little pub, that was, but I guess that's the way things are going in the UK. With uh, me and the bucket have just been discussing the way the UK is going. And uh, I've made the right decision. I've just noticed there's one of the Dubs Outlaws vans there. You can catch them on Facebook if you're into uh, VWs, like I am. Anyway, here we are on Babacombe Downs. Over there is uh, where there was a famous house that was famous on the news for falling down the cliff. <laughs> In fact, all those houses up there now have been abandoned because there used to be houses right on the edge here. It's all gone now. So yeah, this is Babacombe Downs. I, uh, I did a few gigs. They have a, a festival here every year and they put a massive marquee which takes up all this area here. I've been on stage there several times. Um, in fact, the last time I did it, I think I was with the band called The Hoops uh, with my girlfriend, Lindsay Collard. Um, and down there, 30 years ago, that's the Kerry Arms, 30 years ago, a friend of mine owned the uh, hotel just up the way. And I used to spend my holidays there. And another story. <laughs> I met a friend of mine at the Kerry Arms one year, and I'm anchored Jorro just in the middle there. And uh, he said to me, Reggie, is your boat moving? I said, no. Nah. Anyway, we're about five or six points in. We're having a lovely afternoon. And he said... Uh, I'll just go and get another pint. I mean, yeah, and I looked, I thought my boat is moving. <laughs> well, in them days, I had a, a dinghy that was way too big with a seagull on the back, which was way too small. I ended up chasing Jorro off and round the corner. I got on board about there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, dyslexia. Um, I never did that again. I'd, um, I'd misread the... Uh, the uh, tidal heights and put two little chain out so the anchor um, wasn't actually on the bottom as the tide came in and funnily enough as the tide came in the boat went out which was a bit odd but there you go anyway like I say that's uh, Babacombe Downs Well, here we go. It's a bit early in the morning for the Rudge. Uh, final push. Gonna go and get the hire van. I'm just coming over with the Hobbit because I'm not allowed to lift anything. And uh, Pat can get a bedroom back because I've got a telly, bedding, clothes. There's lots of stuff in the living room to put on the van. And then we've got to go uh, to the garage, get the toolbox, then to Jed's. And then, uh, then the Bronco Chicken Boys place. I'll put all that in. So I'll best have a coffee and wake myself up. What are you doing, Bucket? Putting the kettle on. Just putting the kettle on. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Today's the day. I get to see what colour my carpet is. <laughs> Yeah. How are you, Andy? Um, driving about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the crew here. Look, the Hobbit's arrived. 
Uh, that that wasn't as smooth as it should have been, really. She was supposed to come on the train and end up coming on the bus. We'll go into that later on. Anyway, me and Andy are off to get the van. See you in a minute, Hobbit. See ya. Right, so this is what's your name, mate? Uh, Sam. And uh, this is the uh, the van that's going to be going to Nomad. Uh, he's told me just a video around it. For those of you who never ride a van before, you have to make sure there's no dinks or scratches or marks, anything like that. And of course, the other thing is, how often have you borrowed something and then thought, did I put that dent in it? <laughs> it's just not the need for the bottom. They haven't got any reversing sensors, so just be careful. Yeah, right. Bit. The only bit is just from here. Oh uh, yeah, it's got the face on this yeah. That is all logged on our side. So yeah, it looks all right. There's no chips in the windscreen. No. Um, any chip in the A zone is classified as damage. On the passenger side, it's bigger than like a golf ball that's got legs, basically. Right. So that's the van. Uh, it's level for level on the fuel. Right. Um, and in there, there is. A quarter of a tank, so you can tank. Yeah, it. okay. The isolated switch for the back is just here. Right, okay. It just flicks on and that activates the electrics there at the back. Uh, have you used all the tail lifts before to show you? Uh, I have a long time ago, though. Yeah, yeah well, just give us a brief. It through, it yeah, yeah. Um, so they can operate when they're off yeah. um, by activating that tail switch, but it's just if they've been sat for a while, they might need the engine ticking over. The engine doesn't need to be on whilst that's yeah. on. The battery guard in place. And then that activates, in theory, it should activate this bit here, which drops down. There you go. Actually drops through down so you can put the load on. There's the rails on both sides. Yeah. Yep. You can also then turn over the isolator switch onto here. Only one of these will work at the same time. You've got the other side. Right. Or the other side. And then just switch it all. Right. Points you up. Yeah, it won't be lifting anything like that. And remember to change over. See, now if I do that, you won't be able to laugh at me because the expert did it. <laughs> There we go. Thanks very much, mate. That's all right. No worries. Just grab some signatures from you. Yeah, sure. We'll... Right. Well, it's been a while since I drove anything uh, remotely as big as this because I've been riding my bike in Greece. So uh, here we go. There's Andy waiting to give me hand blessing. Couldn't have done this without the help of some really close good friends. So thank you all for that. Right. Let's crack on with the first load. See if I can get the tail lift to work now. He seemed to have a few problems with it, but uh, we'll see. Chicken boy, what are we doing? I don't know, Calvin give it me. Right, so we've been to um, Jed's. He didn't, he didn't show his face, he was busy. And uh, yeah, now we've got to organise it so it's neat because it's going to be loaded to another lorry. And Chicken Boy has got all this that I've got to put in. And that's the problem at the minute, ain't it, Chicken Boy? <laughs> you can't say that on my YouTube channel. I'm going to have to cut that out. <laughs> too much stuff to move. Too much stuff, yeah. Too much stuff, too much to, stuff move. to move. That's that's more like it. That's too much stuff to move. Right, on well, my back's... Add it now. Uh, what you got there, chicken boy? Cup of coffee. Has he got uh, any fish and chips in his car? Yeah, have you got any fish and chips in your car? Oh, are they? Oh, you shouldn't have told her that. <laughs> Where are 
Oh, by the way, I haven't been introduced, have you? This is the Hobbit, that's Chicken Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Love you, bro. Love you too. You don't have to do that, chicken boy. You can have it. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want you doing this. It's brilliant there as well. <laughs> He's a good chicken boy, isn't he? He is good. Even though he hasn't got any fishy chicks in his car. No, he hasn't got any chicken strips. He's ate them all, that's why. Then forgive. Oh. Well, that was unexpected. Hey, brimmed. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. Better go and pay for it then, Hobbit. Um, do you think they'll do a mortgage? It's not even in euros. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. Oh, yes. Um, mm. Yes. I think so. <laughs> what do you think of that then, Hobbit? People are going to get the wrong idea if you keep filming me eating. <laughs> hmm. Well, you can't stop at Telegraph Hill. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are wondering, this is Telegraph Hill on the way down towards Torquay, Newton Abbott and that area. And uh, on the A380, as you can see by the sign up there. And they do a very nice baguette. Huge. Huge. Very it's nice though, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. And a nice Costa, uh, not Costa, yeah, Costa coffee. Just a little tip. Anyway, onward and upward. So what did you just say, Hobbit? <laughs> I said, could you go back a bit? Because I missed the photo opportunity of the bridge. Oh, look, it's coming up again. She missed the photo opportunity. Keep the car steady. Oh, it's a van. There we go. <laughs> Hobbits like taking pictures, apparently. <laughs> Well, a couple of hours in and things weren't going well. Yes, maybe we should have come off at that junction and listened to the sat now. Welcome to the UK. Well, as you're all used to by now, nothing ever goes smoothly in Rudge World. Here's the Hobbit look. Hobbit's enjoying herself. I'm going to go for a walk because, as you know, I had a bit of a problem with my legs. Look, there's a tail back there for miles, and God knows how far that goes. And we're hoping to be at um, Nomads for three. I don't think that's going to happen now. I was hoping to pop in and see my mum. So I thought I'd wander around the van, stretch my legs, check the tail if it's all right. Check all the tyres are good. Everybody's having a party. This will be on the news tonight. And uh, that's your latest report. I think we're by Gloucester. We got that far. We're on the turn off for Gloucester, aren't we? Cheltenham. Cheltenham. I even got that wrong. So, yeah, this is your roving reporter for. Uh, Rudgy aka the doctor, stuck in traffic, very fed up, back's hurting, legs are gone numb, costing me a fortune, speak to you in a minute. Well we're just coming off the uh, M42 now. <coughs> So we'll be going along there for a while, we've done the M5, we've done the uh, massive traffic jam where a lorry had gone off the road and down into a hedge. 
Hobbit's been having a little sing song. I've been losing the will to live. <laughs> we're both very thirsty. And uh, we're going to be late for Nomad. But I've rang Dan, and Dan, as good as gold, said he's there till half six. Today, I've picked the right day. So, hopefully, we'll get there. The journey continues. I'm just coming on to the M42 now. Well, here we go again, broken Britain. <laughs> we're currently on the M6 around the Coventry area. My old stomping ground and had my recovery company. Rudge Motors of Falongley, the big tow company. Anyway, as you can see, nothing's moving. Hmm, I agree. Hobbit's just pointed out. It's what quarter to five, did you say? Our ETA is quarter to five. Oh, our ETA is quarter to five. They shut at about five. <laughs> and it's half past three now. And it's half past three now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no pressure. And those of you who've watched me a long time think I've got a lovely life cruising around Catalonia. This is what you have to do to set all that up. <laughs> Uh, my advice to anybody moving stuff uh, out of the country and you're going to use Nomad, stick it on a courier. <laughs> Unless you like being stuck in traffic jams. It is cheaper, but oh dear me. Anyway, the or traffic's you, moving again now. you could have got up at 7am. Well, we could have done, yeah. And you could have not stopped for the sausage pie. Not stopped for the sausage pie? Now, those of you who know me know that I'm sort of, you know, quite passionate about my sausage pies and sausage rolls, and we've just had a very fine sausage baguette, didn't we, Hobbit? You well, liked it, didn't you? Have I told you once or twice that I don't really eat meat? Um, yeah, but I don't take a nose of that. <laughs> it was lovely decomposing flesh first thing in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> she didn't complain. <laughs> Coffee was nice, even though you put sugar in it, and I don't take sugar. Oh. And you know I don't take sugar. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you ever been so glad to see a sign? Don't, I nearly cried. <laughs> we got a bit lost, <laughs> and uh, the Hobbit nearly cried. It is ten past five, and they shut ten minutes. Yeah. Ago. Anyway, he's waving us in. Look. He's seen us. We're on our way. Do you want to hold the camera a minute, Hobbit? Oh, Christ. I'm going to come inside. It's coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, How are you doing? <laughs> well, what we do is we get you to reverse into the warehouse. Yeah, okay. And we're just going to sort of take you down and just round the back for us. Right, brilliant. Right. Cheers, mate. Yeah. You don't mind being on YouTube, do you? No, no, no. no. We're fine here. <laughs> Right, now I'll see if I can reverse into something. Yeah, try not to hit anything. Mm. There's no trees, so you should be alright. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a low blow. <laughs> all right guys you're all going to be on rudgy aka the doctor <laughs> right brilliant right we better get unloaded then As you can see, it's a hive of activity. <laughs> well, you're going to cycle it over, eh? Right? <laughs> Isn't it costy, mate? Uh, I was going to ride it, but because I've got my back in there, I think we might lose you. I'm going to find out how it costs me. Yeah, it's doing it now, yeah. So I'm taking the documents when we're going to go on. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 
Well, I think that's going to be the Greek national debt to pay for that lot to go out there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that seems to be working well then. Hobbit's got a cup of tea. She's very pleased with that because it's milky. She was going to get some noodles, but then decided, no, she wasn't. She's going to wait till we get to Stratford because we're going to go through Stratford on the way home. We're not going M42. I've got a cup of tea and our truck awaits us. It's been quite a good truck, hasn't it? Yes. So, Enterprise, so far, yes, I would say I'm impressed. Anyway... Meanwhile, the electric car's been charged, it's going well. <laughs> oh, I mean, that took us a few minutes and we're on the road, we've still got half a tank. We filled up in Torquay, we've got half a tank and um, yeah, he's been there three days now charging his car. He's give up look, he's pulled the plug out and he's going to continue his journey. He probably stopped about four times, but never mind. That's the electric car for you. It's a brave new world, guys. Did you find me saying that? Seven, Seven hours, uh, hours, currently. Yeah, now, you see, okay, electric cars. All right, let's put this on the record, because I'm always going windmills, solar panels. I don't think they're the future, but what I would say is they have a place in all the other things that we're doing, as Richard Hammond said recently. Electric cars do have a place, but not really for long distance, I don't think. Not for getting stuck but You can leave in there. the comments what you think of them. I'd be interested to see how many of you like electric cars and how many of you don't. That would be an interesting poll, wouldn't it? It would. There weren't yeah. any broken down Teslas, though, were there? I didn't see any fires. No, they were, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So, as with any road trip, we've decided, because we're both a bit knackered now, no, I can't say that, come on. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so, as with any road trip, uh, we're a bit tired now, so we've decided to stop for um, something to eat. Yes. Hobbit had a kip, because she can lie down on, because she's only little, she can lie down on this seat here. Do you have to? Uh, so, yeah, we're at Gordano. Gordano, I've heard it called. But I call it Gordano, because I'm from the Midlands, <laughs> and I don't really care. So, yeah, we're going to go and get a burger. In Waitrose. In Waitrose? Well, that's nearly John Lewis. It is nearly John Lewis. <laughs> and I've got my coupons. <laughs> As you can see, <laughs> the Hobbit is in good form. <laughs> I've had a sleep. <laughs> yes, the sleep. God help me now. <laughs> right, let's go. Right, so that's the van delivered back to these guys. Cheers, guys. I'll uh, see you Christmas and I'll hire a car off you, probably. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I can only recommend them. Good vehicles, friendly staff, Torquay. So, onward and upward. Catch you later, guys. Well, there you go. All my stuff in the UK is now ready to be shipped to Kefalonia uh, in storage with Nomad International. Still waiting to see how much that's going to cost. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank... Uh, all the friends I have in the UK that have gone above and beyond uh, to help me on this journey. Uh, you really are something else. A lot of you are just like, like you to know that. Um, in particular, Chicken Boy, because if it hadn't been for Chicken Boy, uh, getting me out to the island uh, under difficult circumstances a few years ago, uh, I wouldn't have had the paperwork to be able to do this in the first place. So yeah, thanks Chicken Boy. And then, of course, you've got uh, 
the bucket is always here for me. Always, when you ding a bell, you'll get something to eat and a cup of tea at her house. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to thank her as well and then there's uh, the Hobbit what you say about her well <laughs> no I won't be drawn <laughs> she's been very good to me she uh, she looked after me when I was ill with Covid and then of course I had a real problem with my back couldn't walk for a while um, lost <laughs> that was a bit scary but uh, yeah the Hobbit helped me through that and has uh, managed to find me bits of work here and there uh, to keep me going so I'd like to thank her, and uh, and then all my other friends, I mean Andy and people like that, you know. <laughs> I'm very, very fortunate I have a lot of good friends, and I'm also really fortunate that I've got you guys out there watching me. Um, so yeah, that's the shouts out. Um, I'd like to list you all, but there's too many of you. So anyway, that's all I can say about that. Rose home. It's running a public house by the looks of it. <laughs> anyway that was this week's video i hope you enjoyed it as much as much as we enjoyed making it uh, and if you did as i said earlier hit the like share and subscribe button that will help me a lot and uh, for those of you yet again i will say it for those of you who hit the uh, the coffee page this week thank you ever so much massive massive help just at the moment i'm hemorrhaging money <laughs> And uh, the bucket's drinking habits aren't helping. <laughs> Water, dear. Water. The dear, yeah, I've seen the Mythos bottles. Oh, there's a tip there. When the bucket comes out to visit me, invest in Mythos shares because they shoot up, don't they? <laughs> anyway, from me and the bucket, <laughs> it's good night from him and, and it's good, good night from, from her. her. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, here we go with your winter warmer bursting through your device, your camera, your phone, your laptop, your television, all those devices that we now have. And the question today is, where am I? Yes, indeed, where am I? Some of you might recognise it. Leave in the comments where you think it is. The winner doesn't get a prize or anything because that's the sort of channel we are. We don't even give a blankety blank checkbook and pen away. <laughs> but you could get to have lunch with me if you're paying. <laughs> but seriously, no. Uh, I jest, as always. Yeah, where am I? Where indeed? I'll give you a clue. Rabbit Island's just over there. Anyway, that's your winter warmer. Maybe that will give you a clue there. And the fact that I used to be able to watch this from my place in Spilia, uh, it all used to light up at certain parts of the day, certain parts of the night, sorry. Now I'll cut that out. <laughs> cut.